Hello, my name is Rich Wilbur. I work for Valen Corporation. And what we're going to talk about today is proper layout of tubing and how to properly bend it. The nice thing about tubing is everything you do with a piece of tubing can also be applied to bending conduit as well. We've all heard the phrase, measure twice, cut once when you're working with wood. The same thing applies when you're bending tubing. You have to measure twice, you can only bend once because you cannot unbend a piece of tubing. You must start over for the fresh piece. So what we're going to start with is laying out a piece of tubing. Okay. How you're going to start is you're going to cut the piece of tubing to length by using a tubing cutter. After you cut the tubing, then you're going to use a deburring tool. Now, you have to make sure that the deburring tool is for the materials that you're using. If you're going to go to a local hardware store, the deburring tool that you're going to get is most likely going to be for PVC or copper tubing. So you have to make sure you have the right type of cutter. Of course, the inside is for the ID of the tubing. Going to deburr the tubing, get that burr off of there, and then the OD is for here. Do that to both ends of the tube because you don't want to have a burr on your tubing because what can happen is that burr could break off, go downstream, clog a filter, um, have metal particles on valve seats and so forth and cause problems. So we're going to make four bends in this piece of tube, and how we're going to do this is we're going to make four inch bends. So you're going to line up on zero, we're going to make the first mark at four inch. And then we're going to make the second mark at 12 inch on our piece of tubing. Now with our bender, place the tubing in the bender. And we want to put that four inch mark we just made right on the 90. Make sure you use your tubing clamp. Make your bend to where the zero meets the 90. Then we're going to check with our square to see how well we did. Now here it looks like I underbent. Since I underbent, I could put it back in the bender and bend a little more. If you overbend, you have to start over fresh because you cannot unbend a piece of tubing. go. That looks like a good 90. So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be measuring from the center line of the tube down the long leg. So the next mark we're going to make is going to be another four inch bent mark, another four inch bend. So now what we're going to do is measure from the center line of the tube. So we're going to go from the center line of the short leg, we're going to go down and make another four inch mark on the long leg. So now this next bend we're going to make is actually going to be in the down direction. So if we are laying out a piece of tubing and we know we're going to be bending in the down direction, what we may want to do is put a little bend away mark here. And maybe this next bend is going to be in another direction, so we'll put a, a mark here, maybe one over here, and, and so forth. So what that's going to do is going to help you not have to refer to a drawing or refer to the layout that you're going to be placing the tubing in. You'll be able to just mark out your tubing and uh, continue working. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make this bend down. We're going to put this on the 90 just like we did before. And you want to make sure this is as perpendicular as you can make it. Go ahead and make the 90 degree bend like we did before. Bring that zero down to the 90. Now we have our second bend. Okay. So now we've made two bends, four inches, four inches. Now this mark here is at 12 inches. If we did four inches, four inches, and we measured four inches again, we should be right dead center on that 12 inch mark. But we're a half inch short. And the reason we're a half inch short is what's called tubing gain. Every time that you bend a piece of tube, we have what's called tubing gain because we're measuring from the center line of the tube rather than one side or the other. So each time you make a bend with quarter inch tubing, the tubing gain is about roughly a quarter of an inch. We made two bends, so that's where that half inch comes into play. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do what's called a reverse bend. We're going to, these two were forward bends, now we're going to bend in the upward direction. So if we made our mark, we'd have a bend away mark here because we're going to bend away from that mark to make a U shape. So a reverse bend is a little bit different in the bender.
Now you'll notice on the bender, we have an R here. What that R stands for is either radius or reverse. So what this is gonna do is take basically the radius out of the bend. So we're gonna make a U shape. We're gonna be going in the opposite direction. I wanna make that as perpendicular as we can. And again, even though we're putting that mark on the R, we're still gonna bring this zero down to the 90 to make another 90 degree bend. And now we have a U shape. And what this is going to do is as you lay this out, if you have a piece of pipe or a filter housing or a valve body you wanna measure around, you can easily make that measurement and lay it out and, and bend your tubing. So your, your center line to center line dimension should be right at four inches. Another thing to notice is your marks that you made aren't dead center of the bend, okay? But on that back bend we just did, your mark is dead center of the bend. You can see that right there. So now we're gonna make one more bend, and that's gonna be a bend in a different plane. So this time, we're gonna bend up. So if we wanted to do that, we could put a bend away mark on this side. So we'll make another four inch mark, center line of the tube, four inches. We're gonna go back to marking, making that line on the 90. Make this as flat or as horizontal as you can. And then go ahead and bring the zero down to the 90 like we've done with the other bins. Okay, now imagine trying to make this shape out of pipe. If these were not standard nipple sized pipes, you'd have to cut each pipe and thread both ends. That's very time consuming and uh, very expensive. Whereas you can use tubing, you can measure, you can mark, lay out, bend, and then you can put this in service.